Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and I recently built a PC inside the NZXT H6 Flow RGB, and I used a 240mm all-in-one cooler when I could have used a 360mm. The reason was it was what I happened to have knocking around, and I wanted to see how it would work with the Core i9-14900K. So the question of this video is, is a 240mm enough to cool an i9, because obviously that's a top-end processor, and one that does run fairly hot. For this purpose, I'm using the Strix 2 motherboard, which is the Z790 Gaming A Wi-Fi 2, and a very nice setup with, as you can see, a 4090 Corsair Dominator Titanium RAM and a number of NZXT's RGB fans. Full specs are listed in the description so you can find out more here, but I figured that with 320mm intake fans and two 140mm intake fans on the bottom of the case, maybe the cooler would be enough to run well in this setup. It is a pretty good case with reasonable airflow in multiple vented positions and some good direction in terms of where air is coming from, and you'll see there's plenty of venting as well. But then when I started using the machine and playing various games, I've been dabbling in Starfield and Alan Wake 2, and then I found that the computer was ramping up the fans pretty loud and I quickly realised that was because the CPU was getting a bit toasty. You can see here that we're maxing out some of the performance cores to 100 degrees C. So I ran it through Intel's extreme tuning utility. Inside there there's a stress test option which allows you to put the CPU under load and then look for thermal throttling. I've done a video recently on thermal throttling and how to test for it and things that you can do about it if you do discover it. But this is a very handy tool that quickly will highlight any problems. Now I was already aware that there probably was an issue because Starfield shouldn't really be running the CPU at that heat. Although, you know, some games are CPU bound, so there may well be issues there. But you can see immediately that the extreme tuning utility showed that it was indeed thermal throttling. This is essentially where the CPU gets too hot and then it has to reduce the amount of performance that it can give you in order to cool down a bit. So you're sort of going up and down as it reaches top temperature and then comes back down again. It's to obviously stop you from damaging the CPU and it prevents the system from shutting down, but it does mean that you're throttling the overall performance and you're not gonna get as good an experience out of it. So not ideal to have your cores fluctuating in, in the very high 90 degrees. Now this can be down to a number of different things and sometimes it can be as simple as a problem with a the thermal paste or indeed the seating of the cooler over the CPU. So I figured that I would first of all check that the pump head was seated down properly and it was so all the bolts were tightened up nicely it wasn't a good position there. My next port of call was to check the thermal paste because perhaps the pre-applied thermal paste either wasn't doing a good enough job or I damaged it perhaps when installing the CPU and the setup there and therefore it wasn't giving good coverage. Now as you can see when we remove the crack and cooler it doesn't cover the whole of the IHS so maybe there were some hot spots there that was problematic. So what I wanted to do here is use a Noctua wipe, clean up the CPU and the copper plate on the pump and then replace that thermal paste with some cryonaut from Thermal Grizzly because that does a better job of thermal conductivity and hopefully this would be enough as long as the pump was then seated back down over the top to ensure the system runs a bit better and keeps that CPU cooler. Now I will note that the CPU isn't running super hot all the time in the original setup but it does obviously get quite hot under gaming loads and maybe that would be a problem depending on the sort of games you're playing. So I've put a thermal grizzly on there I've got a better spread so coverage across the entirety of the IHS so it should ensure better thermal conductivity through here and then I went back and obviously reseated the cooler back down and made sure that all those thumb screws were tightened up nicely so it was good contact there I hoped that this would be a good enough solution that it would solve the problem so I went back into Windows and I ran Cinebench 2024 and then I immediately saw that, once again, unfortunately, the cores were still getting too hot, so still pretty toasty in here. Now, this is worth bearing in mind, because obviously, if your cores are getting that hot, then it's probably going to be thermal throttling. But it's also a really easy test to do, because Cinebench is free, and I'm using hardware monitor on the right-hand side here just to check the max temperatures 
Obviously, it's not constantly at 100 degrees. You can see it's dropped down a bit, but that's probably because it's throttling. And so not ideal. This is a nice, easy way to test the system. But also Cinebench does put the system under a lot heavier load than you'd usually get with gaming. So it's not necessarily a reason to panic, but it is a good sort of at a glance test of whether there is a problem, especially if it's initially tested like that. Now, when I first set this up, I realized I was using the wrong sort of AIO. Really, I should have a 360 mil one up there. But I've also got a rear 120 mil fan set as exhaust. Now, I thought now maybe if I could improve the airflow, to put more intake into there to get some cool air blowing more towards the all-in-one cooler radiator, that might help. So what happens if I flip the fan over, so this 120mm fan at the back, I'm going to change it into an intake fan instead. So just as a reminder, I've got 240mm fans on the bottom intaking, three 120 mils on the side, and now another 120 mil at the rear and basically I've only got two exhaust fans now in this current setup obviously there will be some leakage through the holes at the rear anyway and I thought this was worth testing so I've obviously improved the thermal paste and I've got better cooling potentially now and then once again I went back in and I ran the test with Cinebench and unfortunately once again it's still getting really hot CPU temperatures in here now I will say that the i9s have always run really hot but obviously this is not ideal and I've actually seen better performance before. The end result is no, 240 mil is not good enough. But one thing of interest is with the changes that I've made, I'm actually getting a higher Cinebench score now. So with the new thermal paste and with that fan flipped over of 1746 than I was with the original test when I had it in the standard setup where I only got 1683. So... These changes have made a difference. I have actually got a better Cinebench score, which suggests that it's not thermal throttling quite as often, and it is actually running better. So it is worth considering the setup of your airflow and maybe your thermal paste and just checking the pump head, but especially probably worthwhile considering investing in a 360 mil if you're going for a high-end CPU like that. Thinking about push-pull setup maybe, or even a larger radiator and just general airflow in your case. If you'd like to find out more about that case and everything else used in this video, check out the links in the description for more. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.